Um, we should probably go ahead and get started then, and Governor Gaffney can uh, join us. Uh, th this should be a fairly uh, short meeting. We just. Morning, everyone. I uh, hope uh, you all are well and, and uh, healthy and, and just feeling good. Um, good to see everyone. And with that said, I'd like to ask for the roll. Okay. Governor Burnhill? Present. Governor Kelly? Uh, you were muted, but I, I see you, so I will take that as a yes. Governor Kumar? Yes. Governor Stancato? Here. Governor Thompson? Present. Professor Beal? Here. Paul Beavers? Present. Jasmine Cole? Here. And Amina Kalik? Here. I would ask that um, if you're not going to be speaking, if you can mute your uh, mic just because it'll help uh, with uh, uh, the meeting and for our recording of the uh, tape of the meeting. Thank you so much. A quorum is present. Okay. Thank you very much. I'd like to now entertain a motion to approve the minutes from our May 1st meeting. So moved. Support. Okay. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay. The ayes have it. Now let's move on to the next item, the contingency reserve. So I'm looking for Rebecca. And I apologize, I thought Rebecca was on. Oh, she is here. Well, no. Could we take a brief pause and let me just uh, reach out to Rebecca? I'm sure she is. I know Brian Davy is on the line, but give me one moment. Mm -hmm. Hey Rebecca. Hi. Hi. That that was me calling you. I okay. thought it was me, call, uh, was me calling as well. So. Yeah. Well, so, all of a sudden, uh, everything on my desk exploded. <laughs> um, we're. Never uh, called me through the meeting too. Go Governor Barnhill has started the Budget and Finance Committee. Uh, the minutes have been approved, and he was uh, just calling on you for the contingency reserve presentation. Okay, I'm, I apologize for not being here on time. Um, let me pull up the presentation. And share my screen. Okay, are you seeing the... Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so on the contingency reserve, um, there were no expenditures in this period, and so there's been no change and no need to approve expenditures. Okay. Um, any comments or questions there from uh, any of my colleagues on the committee? All right, let's move on to the next item. So is Rob Davenport on the call? I am. All right, Rob, you're up. Okay. Um, all right, why don't we start with uh, Science Hall roof replacement. Um, Science Hall was constructed in 1949. This is the building that's located on the corner of Cass and Warren. Uh, the building provides space for the Department of Nutrition Services, Food Science, and 
several general purpose laboratory classrooms, lecture halls, and, and science stores. A partial roof replacement occurred in 2011, uh, but there are other sections, other elevations of roofs on the building that need to be replaced, and some um, have not been addressed since 1984. Uh, I walked this roof back in March along with a, uh, a, uh, uh, a team of uh, FPM folks and, uh, and, a, and a roofing um, consultant. And we found that the, the remaining sections of the roof are in critical shape and need to be replaced um, immediately. Um, so we've got a comprehensive plan to do the rest of the roof elevations, to replace the rest of the roof elevations. This will be a complete tear off. Um, so, and we will go with uh, what we call a, a build up system. Um, and this will protect all of the areas below, directly below. Um, the roof. Right now we're experiencing extensive leaks throughout those areas where the roof has failed. So um, at this time we're asking for $850,000 to replace the remaining sections of roof on this on this building and the funds will be provided by our deferred maintenance reserve. So I'll pause here for any questions. I have a question. Um, so I'm just wondering in, in terms of um, the deferred maintenance reserve, how much funding do we have in that reserve and how are we prioritizing the projects that are paid out of that res reserve, especially, you know, as we are in extraordinary financial times and, um, you know, need to be very cautious with spending? Good question. So um, <clears throat> right now we've got around $4 million in the deferred maintenance account for this fiscal year. Um, we are looking at um, use, utilizing those funds for these critical infrastructure needs. Um, so roofing projects and elevator projects are of utmost concern. Uh, we'll see here in just a minute that um, uh, part of the funds within that account will be utilized to fund the Vivarian project as well, another critical project um, that has compliance concerns around it. Uh, so, so as we have information by way of uh, Gordian, which is the former sight lines, and our deferred maintenance uh, program, we've pulled information from that uh, study to prioritize our, our spending uh, plan. And what you said, what study was that? That would be, it was Sightlines initially that did the deferred maintenance uh, study. And it's essentially a study that was um, that was performed to determine uh, where are the uh, weak points within the um, built environment by way of um, mechanical electrical plumbing deficiencies as well as building envelope deficiencies. Um, Sightlines has changed the name of uh, so, right, that's where that intelligence comes from. And this is um, this is the study that you might recall that indicated that we were um, that we had billions of dollars in deferred maintenance that needed to be addressed. And what other projects are do we that have been identified in that study? I mean, is there are there like you know I don't know forty projects, a hundred projects. Um, and how are we prioritizing among those that are? So another great question. So as as we reviewed the the these report from Sightlines, uh, we found a, a few discrepancies within the program that they put together. And so what we've done is we've pivoted their uh, scope of work to develop what we call a facility condition index score. Um, that is a more scientific way of looking at uh, deferred maintenance. Um, we've just engaged them in that process. So what we're doing now is we're taking uh, their initial information and essentially fine tuning it so that we can we can better understand precisely where those deficiencies are and incorporate that strategy with our master plan. Um, so we're we're a we're a few months away from 
a uh, a final um, you know a standardized approach, if you will. Um, but to to uh, to answer your immediate question, we are looking at um, deficiencies that tie back to um, roofs, elevators, and um, some mechanical equipment that are that are critical in nature uh, for this particular fiscal year. So suffice, suffice to say, there's more to come on this program and more clarity to come on this program for 2021. Okay, so there's no approximate number of projects you're saying? I mean, I know you're still going through the pro process oh. of rating things, but I'm trying to get a sense of, you know, how many, what are we looking at in terms of projects? Sure, they're they're very limited in nature right now, um, and, and it's primarily because of our limited funding in the deferred maintenance category. So, um, it's the science hall roof. We're we're also addressing a roof in Manugian. Uh, we've got elevator renovations going on, and then we've got the vivarium project that that will be kicked off as well. Okay. Well, Bob, I think the question that Governor Thompson is asking is how many projects are on the billion dollar list. Oh, wow. My goodness. I'm sorry. Uh, I misunderstood. Uh, there are literally hundreds of projects um, on, on that list. And we can provide that list uh, to the board. Um, we've got that on the ready and off the shelf. So we'll be glad to provide that back up. Okay. Thank you. Brian. I'm sorry, Governor Thompson, are you finished? I just had um, two more questions. Um, one was uh, just to clarify. So you said with the, within these hundreds of projects, that's where you're doing this facility index to yeah. try to determine how to rate them. And then um, is this $4 million balance, does this end this fiscal year? That's, is this my, that's my understanding. I would defer to Brian Dady to be, to be certain of that. That money carries forward, so that's his annual allocation to deferred maintenance. If, if it's not spent, then it carries over to the next year. Okay. And then do we hold classes in this building? We do. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, Governor Thompson. Governor O'Brien? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, actually, Governor um, Thompson asked the question that I was going to ask regarding the um, uh, the uh, whether the balance, the $4 million balance ends August 30 or whether it's till next year. So so you're saying you have a, a $4 million balance till August 30, but it looks as though you have projects that are going to eat up that entire balance by August 30th. Is that correct? It's, it's likely that that will happen, yes. And then, and then for Mr. Dady, how, um, what is, so we, he, we allocate in a budget four million dollars toward deferred maintenance a year, or is it what's the what's the initial balance for the deferred maintenance that, that Mr. Davenport's division gets every year? Uh, so for the fiscal year uh, 2020, his allocation was 4.6 million. So that is what we intend to <clears throat> have the fiscal year 21 budget as well. Um, if you probably look over the history, that number's fluctuated a bit, and it's been reduced as we've tried to balance the budget. But at this point, it's about you know, four point six million that uh, that'll be in the budget on an annual basis. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Any other questions on on this item? Okay, let's move on with the agenda. Wait. Um I'm sorry, Governor Barnhill, we need to take an action on that. So that needs to have a motion to a, a, uh, approve the recommendation, the science hall roof replacement. Okay. All right, I'd like to entertain a motion to um, accept the recommendation for the roof replacement uh, for a, a project cost not to exceed uh, $3.96 million. No, that was uh, the Scott. This, the, That's the um, barium. Okay. Yeah, we, we need to go back to the. Yeah, go back there. to. Right. I got eight hundred fifty thousand. Right. Yeah, right. All right. I'm I'm going to retract that. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the project budget of eight hundred fifty thousand dollars for the proposed roof replacement. So moved. 
support. All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, the ayes have it. Now let's move on to the um, the next item. There we go. Very good, thank you. So uh, this would be the Scott Hall Vivarium Project. Um, this building, of course, is constructed in 1968. Um, this is at um, this is on Canfield. We've got 455. Thousand square feet of classrooms, research labs, office, and facility support spaces. Uh, the vivarium itself is 10,000 square feet, expanded in 1985, and uh, upgraded in 1997. Uh, this particular facility um, is accredited by the Association for Assessment and Accreditation of Laboratory Animal Care, and uh, we've we've been maintaining that accreditation since it was constructed. Um, this particular space um, is it, it, it is dated and it is non-compliant. Um, we've got HVAC issues um, around the bottle washing area and um, space constraints that um, that also tie back to uh, proper work uh, space and efficiencies and also um, controls associated with the workspace. Um, you might recall um, in the meeting, I believe in January of this year, Board of Governors meeting back in January, we asked for a half a million dollars of funding to do um, schematic design, design development, and construction documents. Um, that money was used to develop this budget, and um, so now we are ready to begin construction here. So. We are asking for 3.965 million to begin construction for the um, renovation of the vivarium space. Funding sources include deferred maintenance, um, just north of 1.3 million. Uh, Department of Research will add 1.3 million, as well as uh, School of Medicine. Um, so total total request here again is 3.965. I'll pause here for any questions. Governor Barnhill, can I um, um, get in for a second here? Sure. I'm I'm not sure if Steve Lanier is on the line or not, but um, just wanted to mention that the uh, the result of the uh, study that was done for the um, five hundred thousand dollars came in at at a at a much higher amount, close to seven million dollars, is what is actually needed to uh, bring this uh, vivarium up to what we think is is an appropriate amount. Um, Steve and the researchers, because of the financial situation, has worked really hard to just go to the absolute minimum of what is required for accreditation and just try to nurse this along until there's a, a new school medicine building or a, a new Scott Hall, so to speak, with the appropriate vivarium. So this is what's considered to be, you know, the bare bones minimum to be able to uh, maintain accreditation. The actual study came in with uh, what was recommended at a much higher number. Just wanted to just mention that. I have a question. Um, so the project budget that we had in our materials um, indicated that the funding sources also included the strategic initiative funds, but I see it's not listed on the project budget for that you have up here. So I'm wondering about that discrepancy and, and wondering also what are these strategic initiative funds? So the, the um, so this I'll, was, I'll, an I'll okay. answer that, though, Rebecca. So uh, the reason why it's not up there is that um, Steve came to me just, just last week with a shortfall of, I don't know, $300,000, $350,000 or something like that in order to reach that 3.965 and ask if I could pitch in. The strategic initiative fund is, is a fund that, um, that I have that is uh, discretionary for things like this. Um, and so, okay. and, and, yeah. 
Um, I mean, this happened the last time where there was a change to the documents that were posted that we had and what we're being presented today. Um, why aren't we That's, notified of this? So the, the, this is incorrect. Um, the document that was posted and that you have is correct. This presentation was put together last week before that change was made, and my assistant has been out this week. And I have to admit, I went through these materials, but I did not catch this change when I went through the materials this week to make sure that they were uh, mirrored what was on the website. So I apologize for that. Uh, okay, so there, so then there is a $350,000 short fund, and those funds need to come out of the strategic initiative fund. And, and basically, that's a contribution from the president to the School of Medicine. Um, okay. It, it's bolstering the School of Medicine's share of the funding. Okay. okay. Um, I, I have another question, just in terms of the vivarium, and what animals are there? And what, what happens with the animals that are in this vivarium? It, it's mainly mice. And, and it's you know a lot of our research relates to my is with mice mice models a lot of the genetics research a lot of cancer research um, there okay. may be some other small uh, small animals but it's, it's predominantly mice. Do we have dogs there? I know there were protests about us testing dogs. Not in this vibarium, I don't think. Am, am I right, uh, Rob? You, you're correct. Yeah, not in this particular space. No. Okay. And what's the balance of the strategic fund? After this 350, I think I have about a hundred thousand. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Thompson. Any other questions? Okay. So let's move. Um, forward with the uh, action here. Um, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the project budget. So moved. Is there support? Support. I'm sorry, could I get the maker of the motion? I, I apologize. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. And who supported that, please? Marilyn. Thank you so much. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, any opposed? Okay, in the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. All right, let's move on to the next item on our agenda, uh, the major capital projects update. Very good, thank you. So um, generally speaking, as I mentioned in the last Board of Governors meeting, um, most, well, really all projects except for one are experiencing delays due to the, the COVID uh, pandemic. And those delays are generally six weeks in nature. Um, the only exception would be the arena, uh, and primarily because the arena started early due to uh, favorable weather conditions over the winter. So we are still on pace to complete the arena in September of 2021. Um, again, all other projects are experiencing delays. Um, the other thing uh, to note is that some projects are experiencing um, uh, labor shortages um, as well. Uh, the Gateway project in particular is is uh, experiencing a shortage of electricians, for example. Um, so um, beyond that, everything else appears to be on pace, again, uh, knowing that there's a delay in impacting uh, these projects. So um, let me pause here and ask if there are any questions. Rob, uh, this is Linda. I'm curious on the STEM Learning Center. Uh, it says interior by June 30th and exterior by October 1st. So if we do have some uh, classes that would normally be there, do we expect it could be used in the fall semester? So I do have a, a fresh update, um, and, and this came to me yesterday. Um, we are looking at a um, occupancy permit being issued toward the end of September. 
um, and that is due to you know the um, the six week delay due to the COVID pandemic. Um, so we're looking into trying to improve that date, um, and also we're working with the academic side to see um, the critical nature of uh, you know making this building available for fall semester. Um, so we do have some flexibility there potentially, uh, but we do not have that worked out at this particular moment. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair and Sandy, I have a question. Yeah. Thank you. Um, on item 15, uh, this is University Towers Deferred Maintenance Improvements. Um, it says that Corvius is managing the work. Does that mean that they are handling the bidding and, and all that kind of stuff, the construction and the bidding? Are they, is that what they're doing? That's correct. Are they also, um, uh, can we confirm whether they are using union labor? I will confirm that. Do you know? Uh, typically they do, but I would prefer to uh, come back to the group here this morning with an answer on that. Okay. I had been, just for your information, before you were here, I think a year ago, I had been um, informed by some um, uh, union folks that um, were working on one of our buildings that that um, non-union were used, and then um, some screw-ups were done, and then union came in. Had to be had, so we had to pay twice. I see. Wow. Okay. So I don't know that. I mean, this is what they were telling me. So I just, I, if you could get back to us and let us know, that would be great. Will do. Absolutely. And then also. Um, um, did we ever on the STEM on 21? Did we ever uh, receive the money from the state yet for our for their portion of the building? Yeah, let me defer to Brian Dady on that. Um, I know that the uh, it works as the state is the last dollar in, so it depends on how far along we are with the expenditures of that project. Um, I, I know we are re routinely reporting to the state on that project. I assume we are drawing on it, but I don't have that information uh, readily available right now. Can you get that information for us? And uh, sure. it, it would be nice to, I mean, the only reason we're doing that is because we had money. We got appropriations, or, or uh, I'm sorry, we got um, monies from the state to, to help us with that project. Um, so it would be nice to know whether we're, you know, these, this is a few years ago now, so it'd be nice to know whether we're getting the money or not. <clears throat> it looks like the project's coming to a head here. So, you know, October, you're saying here, October one for the exterior. Yeah, it'll be toward the end of October that, uh, that the building will be uh, finally complete. And um, let's see. I, I don't know if they're, Oh yes. Item 24, the parking lot with the M dot construction. Right. Um, did we? I can't remember. Did we? Did we sell them a portion of that, or what did we do with that? Are we getting anything, or are we just paying to help with the bridge? Well, what we're getting is a is a newly paved uh, parking lot and uh, and refreshed parking equipment. Um, so while they use that site for their construction staging, uh -huh. uh, when they're done, they will they will assist in renovating that space. Okay, so how, what is our what is our price point on that? If we're if we're out five hundred and twenty two thousand so dollars, uh, they actually it, gave us the money. I'm sorry. Uh, the state of Michigan uh, provided uh, M dot provided the five twenty two, so uh, they gave us the money, and then we we paid uh, the uh, the contractors as as needed. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you for your questions. Are there any more um, questions regarding this item? Okay, let's move on to purchasing exceptions. And by the way, can you all see me? I'm not sure if my camera's working or not. No. 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 All right. After this, I'm going to have to restart my computer. But let's move, let's move on with the next item. Okay, and I'll introduce Ken Doherty, who will go through the purchasing exceptions report for April. Oh, for May, actually. Ken, are you there? Ken is muted. You need to unmute I your am. Mic. Missed everything I said as way of introduction because I was muted, so I'll start over. Um, good morning, everyone, and um, 
I know that this report is typically an informational only type report. Uh, so I don't know if there are any questions. There isn't anything particular that I would call to the attention of the board for this particular report, other than the fact that because it's only for a month since we did the last report, it's only 10 items. So it's a nice short one for you today. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any questions from my colleagues on the committee? Um, any questions from my colleagues on the board? Um, question or go ahead, Linda. Linda can go first. I just I just had a quick question about the N95 masks item five, and just curious how long that supply is expected to last. Well, is Dr. Lanier on the call? Oh, there you go. Yes, I'm on the phone. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> well, how long that supply is expected to last is a little bit dependent on a lot of factors. It, you know, now that the, now now that the um, supply uh, the the demand the supply the demand has decreased with the decrease in the cases and everything around us. At the same time, the supply has increased. So um, it's hard to predict how long that will last with additional supplies in place and decreased demand. But we wanted to be sure you know we have flexibility as we go into potential. Uh, uh, increased infections going into the fall, et cetera. So, um, right, that's it. Yep. Can I can I compliment that by adding to that that we have now ordered um, sixty thousand cloth masks, the the washable, reusable right, right. that wouldn't be used in a medical type setting, but would be used for your everyday employee like myself. Um, and the plan with that sixty thousand is there'll be a distribution of probably three to all faculty and staff, um, and we can do that with 20,000. And then housing has 12,000 on order, and uh, the dean of students, uh, Dean Strauss, has 30,000 on order for the non-residential students. So we'll have a pretty decent saturation, but again, well, what I'm talking about there are not KN95 masks. Those are just, right. just the cloth masks that the CDC recommends if you're not in a healthcare environment. Thanks. And I'll add that those will be Wayne State Warrior branded, so um, we'll have some for the board if anybody would like any. Great. Okay, great. Any other questions? I've got a question, Mr. Chair. This is Sandy. Okay. Thank you. Um, Regarding these purchasing exception reports, have we have has communication in these uh, financial uh, times, um, financially conscious times, have ha has communication gone out university wide, and if so, by whom regarding um, uh, regarding you know uh, and you know, not putting in for purchasing exceptions or, you know, you know, not doing anything that we don't need to do. Um, and that's not an immediate need or a prior contract, things of that nature. Um, I just did, you know, I'm, I'm, well, that's, that's my question, I guess. Yep. Many of us could answer that. Um, but I'll say that the, I'm, I'm looking to see if I can pull it up quickly. It doesn't look like it, but the president put out an email to the entire campus um, talking about four things when it talked about the financial impact. And one of them was to limit all purchases to those that were essential only. Could you share that with us, Dr. Wilson? Um, sure, I'm, I, I'm sure that it was shared, but um, yes. Julie, can you grab that? Uh, yes, we'll, send it, out. we'll yeah. send it out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, Any, anything else? All right, so the moment we've all been waiting for, let's go to the so, e rates. So Rebecca would do uh, uh, the presentation, but uh, I just wanted to make a few, few comments prior. Um, you know, discussions about tuition are ones that are both the administration and the Board of Governors take very seriously, and and uh, they're never entered into 
without a thorough review of the impact of these decisions on our students. Uh, as I mentioned, Rebecca would be doing more of a formal presentation, but there's a, a couple of things I just want to mention. First and foremost, uh, uh, our recommendation is going to be to freeze tuition rates for the upcoming year. And the reasons are that basically these are very challenging economic times due to the coronavirus. So we don't want to add uh, to our students' financial burden or deter anyone from enrolling. You know, many of our students work and go to school and may have had their incomes disrupted due to the pandemic. We also want to give our students as much certainty as we can in these uncertain times and locking in our tuition early and with no increase helps them make plans. You know, Wayne State is already a great value, but a 0% tuition helps maintain that value and is also consistent with what other Michigan public universities who have announced plans to keep tuition flat. And Rebecca has a slide that shows which ones have announced so far. And so given the uncertainty regarding employment opportunities and social distancing policies, we think now is an opportune time to focus on earning credit toward an undergraduate or graduate degree and for people to position themselves for future opportunities. A college degree is still the surest path to a healthy and prosperous life, and a 0% tuition increase is added incentive. Um, I do want to be clear that there will be a significant impact on our budget to holding tuition flat, and in fact, uh, finance recommended a tuition increase. Uh, but after this action today, which uh, hopefully will pass, we will spend the next several months reviewing our budget, discussing options with our campus community members, and building a recommendation on the budget for the board's consideration in September. Tuition will be one piece of building that budget. Uh, enrollment is another, and there's hopeful news with enrollment as uh, numbers are ahead of last year thus far. And strong enrollment would help certainly to offset the loss of dollars that would be generated uh, through a tuition um, increase. State appropriations are, are, are another uh, component, and the state is as of yet uncertain about its own budget, and cuts for next year are, however, expected. So understanding the potential consequences of a tuition freeze and um, through the uncertainties that lay ahead, we remain uh, committed to this tuition freeze and to the work in front of us for the next several months. So with that, I'll ask Rebecca to make the formal presentation. So I have just some background information about tuition. Um, this is a graph that shows for uh, the last decade or so what our um, tuition uh, revenue has been, and then uh, the amount of money we've been using to support financial aid. Um, so this, the green part of this bar is financial aid that comes directly out of the general fund. And so it's, it's basically um, the tuition money that we give back to students in the form of aid. Um, and um, uh, you'll notice because of that, over the last five years, our net tuition revenue has only increased 2%. Um, and, and so um, we are um, not, not increasing tuition, net tuition, at a um, rapid rate. And not, and not enough, as the President mentioned, to cover all of our increases in expenses. Um, this graph shows uh, for um, back to 1986, fiscal year 1986, um, how our tuition has compared to um, the Michigan schools overall and then MSU and um, the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor. Um, and so you can see we're the green line here um, that we are tracking pretty closely onto the average of tuition um, across the state. These are the rates currently uh, for the state schools um, for this year. And you see that we um, fall, as I um, showed on that other graph, just below um, University of Michigan and Michigan State and just above uh, the list of everyone else. 
And um, this is what we know so far about the other school's tuition decisions. Um, Central Michigan University, Michigan State University, Oakland University, Saginaw Valley State University, West, Western Michigan University have all either actually uh, voted already on a tuition freeze or have announced that they are planning to vote on a tuition freeze. So far, the only school that's voted for an increase is Michigan Tech and the uh, list of remaining institutions that have not yet made a decision or announced a decision are in this pending column. I'm going to pause there just to see if anybody has any questions about this information. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was just asking if uh, colleagues want to chime in at all. This is Marilyn. Uh, with respect to the pending schools, uh, we believe some of them will continue with the same tuition next year. Is that correct? Based on what they've signaled? Um, I don't know if there's anybody um, on cabinet who has more information than I do about that. I think some of these schools have been waiting to hear and I talk to other people like me, <laughs> so the people like me uh, maybe have a different opinion than what the president is actually going to do. So I, I would defer to other people in cabinet who might know more about what's likely to happen. Yeah, I, I, I don't know exactly what they're all going to do. Um, the, the, the likelihood is just from conversations at the Matthew level that um, most of the pending, or at least some for sure, are going to freeze tuition. I'm not sure about about some of uh, the University of Michigan, for example. Um, I, I've heard them say that, uh, yeah, both things, I, I've heard them, them say that they're going to try to freeze tuition. I've heard them say that they can't freeze tuition. Um, so I just don't know. Uh, this is Keith Whitfield. Um, the one that about is uh, Grand Valley, and that they're suggesting zero, and um, Eastern is is playing it pretty close to their vest, but uh, there's some thought that they might do zero as well. So if we were to raise tuition, it, we would be among the minority of the Michigan schools, we believe, at this point. I think that's probably true. Presidents outrank finance people. <laughs> and I think that that tension is happening in a number of other schools. So. But I think in the end, they'll probably, especially the more schools that come out at a freeze, the more likely it is that the remaining schools will freeze. Okay, so I'll, I'll move on to, this is, um, and this is in the materials you were provided, um, but this, uh, this is an example of what happens, and of course when it's zero, this is, you know, this is a chart that we do every year, but when it's zero there's no change, but this will give you an idea of um, what it costs for our students to attend here. And that is um, uh, the remainder, that's, that's the end of the presentation on tuition, but you have the um, tuition document uh, in, uh, in the materials that you've received. Rebecca, I don't have that. This is Linda. I don't have that document in front of me, and it's uh, not posted. Um, as I recall, the all the fees stay also at the same rate, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. Just wanted to. And I'm right. really, uh, uh, Rebecca, I also I have a question. Um, so the proposal says that. The tuition will remain the same for um, unchanged for our undergraduates and graduates and most professional students. So that's just excluding the medical school. 
Correct. Every other professional school will remain unchanged. Correct. Okay. I did suggest that it would have read more easily if it had said, and professional students other than School of Medicine MD program students whose rates were previously approved by the Board of Governors in May. Unfortunately, Professor Beal didn't um, see this until after it had already been posted on the public site, and I did not want to change it once it was posted on the public site. It's, it's actually both unclear and probably ungrammatical as it is. Or, And actually, I shouldn't say posted on the public site after it was distributed to the board. I, I, I don't mean posted. It's, this document, by the way, for people who uh, don't understand the distinction, does not get posted until after it's been approved by the board. If Governor Barnhill, you still on the line? Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. I, I, I couldn't see you and I couldn't see the um your um initials. Oh, okay. Yep, I'm still here. Okay. Uh, yeah. For some reason my camera has just been disabled. So I need to figure that out after this. Uh, is it time to uh now dispose of this item? Uh or do we need any more discussion? I move it. I move it. We approve the recommended freeze. This is Marilyn Kelly. Okay, thank you. Um, for all right, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Could I, could I just ask? That was Governor Thompson that supported. I just want yeah. to make sure I got Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. The eyes have it. So this concludes the uh, the budget and finance committee. Correct. Correct. That's the last item. All right. Well, thank you very much, colleagues. So the board meeting then. Uh, President Wilson, you are muted. Just want to thank the board for their uh, for their vote. Um, this will conclude uh, this morning's meeting, and I think we reconvene at 11 o'clock. Is that right, Julie? 11.30. 11.30 we'll reconvene. Thank you very much. Thank you all.
call the meeting to order them. Um, good morning, everyone. Good morning. The board has a very short agenda today, and the meeting is really just to consider items reviewed and acted on the Budget and Finance Committee meeting from this morning. Uh, Secretary Miller, would you uh, please call the roll? Thank you. Governor Barnhill? Are you muted, Brian? I did see you. Present. There we go. Governor Brizuito? Present. Governor Gaffney? Present. Here. Governor Kelly? Present. Uh, Governor O'Brien? Here. Governor Stancato? Here. Governor Thompson? Here. A quorum is present. Great. I've got um, two items on the consent agenda. I'll, I'll read what the uh, what the two are, and then if I can get a, a motion and a second, and if there are any comments or discussions, we can do that, and then um, I'll call for the vote. Uh, <clears throat> the first is um, um, Science Hall roof replacement. Uh, authorize the president or his designee to improve spending to design solicit bids and award contracts for the re replacement of the science hall building roof for cost not to exceed $850,000 for this project. Uh, funding will be uh, provided from the deferred maintenance reserve. The um, the second project authorized is the uh, Scott Hall Vivarium update. It authorized the president or his designee to approve spending for construction documents, bid solicitation, and awarding construction contracts to make improvements to the Scott Hall Vivarium for project costs not to exceed $3,965,000. Funding for this project will be provided from the School of Medicine, Department of Research, the Strategic Initiative Fund, and the Deferred Maintenance uh, Reserve. Um, could I get a, a motion? So moved. I'll okay. support. Okay, it was moved by, I think it was Governor Thompson, is that right? Yes. Okay, Governor Thompson supported by um, Governor Kelly. Are there any um, comments or discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Aye. Okay, I think um, that's a, a clear unanimous. Uh, next, I'd like to call on Governor Barnhill for a committee report. Okay, thank you, uh, President Wilson. Uh, the Budget and Finance Committee met this morning and considered three action items and heard three informal reports from the administration. The action items, uh, two of which were part of the consent agenda uh, heard earlier this afternoon, included funding for updates to the Scott Hall Vivarium and for the replacement of the roof at uh, Science Hall. The informational reports included the balance in the contingency fund and update on capital projects and an overview of purchasing exemptions, uh, which are those expenditures for purchase orders greater than $25,000 that are issued without competitive bids. The committee um, spent a short amount of time disposing of the final item, which is the uh, recommendation of a uh, freeze for tuition rates uh, for fiscal year 2021. Uh, this was met with some introductory comments by President Wilson, followed by a formal recommendation from Interim Vice President Rebecca Cook. Uh, other than the adoption of the budget, which the board will consider at its meeting in September, there is no other item that the board holds in high regard for its impact on our students and on the broader campus community than the adoption of tuition rates. As is the board's policy, the tuition recommendation is not included on the consent agenda, but comes forward to the board for separate consideration, and we will do that now at this time. Uh, I'll give the uh, floor back to the president. Uh, thank you, Governor. Um, what I'm going to do is, uh, is uh, again, just read the action requested and then ask for um, a motion and a second. And then if there's any discussion or comment at that time, we'll do that and then I uh, will take the vote. So the action requested is a motion that the Board of Governors approves the proposed fiscal year 2021 tuition and fee rates as presented. In summary, Wayne State University will freeze fiscal year 2020 tuition rates for the fiscal year 2021. 
Tuition and fee rates will remain unchanged for undergraduates and graduate and most professional students, with the exception of the School of Medicine MD program students whose tuition was previously approved by the Board of Governors in May. It is further recommended that the Board of Governors continue to authorize the President or his or her designee to make adjustments to the rates for special programs or where otherwise appropriate. Can I uh, please have a motion? So moved. Moved by uh, Governor Stancaro and seconded by Governor Kelly. Governor Kelly, great. Yep, Any, Mito, um, oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Mito. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, um, any discussion or comments? I'd like to inform my colleagues that uh, in a in a telephone conversation with Governor Anil Kumar. Uh, the governor informed me that if, were he able to be here to vote, he would vote in favor of a tuition freeze. Other comments? All in favor? Oh, I have a comment. Uh, I'm sorry. I comment. I'm sorry. Okay. I had a comment. Yeah. I had a comment. Um, so um, I'm voting to approve the tuition freeze proposed today for the same reason that I voted against the administration's proposal to increase the medical school tuition for fiscal year 2021. Um, our students are facing an unprecedented global health and economic crisis, and our students shouldn't also have to bear the burden of increased tuition. Our medical school students should not have had to bear this increase either. Going forward, we should work to ensure that our budget reflects our values and our priorities. And if we're truly committed to our academic mission, the administration should put forth a budget in the coming months that values our students, faculty and staff, and reduces administrative bloat. In the wake of the recent killings of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and many other African Americans brutalized by the police and private citizens, we must, as an institution, remain as committed as ever to our mission which is of course to create an advanced knowledge, prepare a diverse student body to thrive and positively impact local and global communities. We must acknowledge the fact that since uh, the president took the helm of this institution, white enrollment is up 4% and black enrollment is down 32%. Baccalaureate degrees awarded to white students are up 41%, and those awarded to black students are down over 10%. Um, and I also wonder why, starting last year, we're no longer providing a breakdown of minority faculty on our website. If we're truly committed to preparing a diverse student body, and we're truly committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion, we have to pay more than just lip service to these concepts. I challenge this president and his administration to take specific and active measures to ensure we're admitting and graduating a larger number of black students. And I challenge this president and his administration to take specific and active measures to diversify the faculty and staff. The urgency of these times demands nothing less. Other comments? I think Governor O'Brien has yeah. hand. Uh, Governor O'Brien. Thank you. Um, I will be um, voting in favor of the proposal um, for a lot of the same reasons that um, I voted against the increase in tuition for the medical school. And, and frankly, I wish... Um, I mean, I don't have to re reiterate. I think, actually, Dr. Wilson this morning in the budget... Uh, committee meeting, um, I was writing down uh, some of the reasoning that you were given that you were giving for uh, for the no tuition increase for undergrad, and it was you know obviously encouraging a robust enrollment, um, our moral responsibility during this time in COVID, um, and uh, the financial strain that a lot of Michigan families are under, and our students, and you know the fact that. There, that there are many people in food lines for the first time in, you know, generations. And, excuse me. And um, those were all the same reasons 
why I voted against a tuition increase at the medical school. And, and frankly, I wish that um, uh, uh, we could have extended the uh, no tuition increase to the entire, to every student at Wayne State, not just, you know, everybody else ex to the exclusion of the medical school. And, um, you know, certainly I wish we could reconsider that vote. I'm not sure that that's possible, but I'm going to throw that out there. And um, I think that uh, for all the reasons, same reasons that I um, did not um, want to increase medical school um, tuition are all the same reasons I I think that it's a good idea that we do not increase tuition at the undergraduate level and, and the other graduate program. Um, so with that, I will, um, I will be voting in favor of no tuition increase. Thank you. Madam Chair. Uh, yes, um, Governor Gaffney. <laughs> Mr. President, Madam Chair, <laughs> thank you. Um, I, the general fund of the university is in much better shape than the School of Medicine's budget. And so there is a difference in those two accounts, and that accounts for why I at least voted for uh, increase in the medical school tuition, but I'll vote against, or I'll vote for freezing uh, the general admission. I agree with part of what Governor Thompson said, but certainly not all of it. And I just want to remind us that we received very recently national awards and recognition for the increases in our minority graduation rate. Uh, the new dean that we've just hired is uh, an exciting African-American woman. So we're working on this. And I, I, I don't want anybody to take uh, Governor Thompson's appeal for continued work, which I agree with. Uh, I don't join it if it's a criticism. If it's an appeal for, for continuing the good work that we're doing, working even harder, uh, uh, I, I stand with you on that one. Thank you. Uh, Governor Busuito. Yeah, I just want, I want to reinforce what Governors uh, Thompson and O'Brien said. You know, in this day and age of social media, which I don't understand too well, I can guarantee you that raising the tuition at the School of Medicine did not help us nationally in, in these social media chats that go on uh, go on, uh, amongst the students. The other thing is in terms of graduation rates, if we're graduating a higher percentage of minorities, but the absolute numbers are significantly lower, how did we help the community? I don't see how. Well, the last I checked, Governor Busuito, the a absolute numbers were actually higher, but I haven't checked in a while. At the time that Governor O'Brien and I wrote the op-ed piece, which was two years ago, the, the absolute numbers were higher, even though the uh, because of the um, graduation rates were, were higher. But, you know, we, we actually have a... Um, but, but that's not correct, because Dr. Thompson cited facts out of the Wayne State University fact book well, using the most recent facts. You know, we, we have a, um, uh, a presentation on June 19th on uh, student success, so I'm, I'm sure all that data will come out. Um, other comments? Yes, Governor uh, O'Brien. Thank you. Um, I, I just wanted to reiterate to my colleagues that um, um, there's, there's some, I think there's some, there has to be some understanding around this whole premise that, you know, that we're winning awards, national awards for the great work we've done um, with our, uh, with our black graduation rate. Um, number one, let's, let's, let's at least be honest about it and say the bar was very low, right? Super low, 7%. And so when we're talking about um, incre you know, winning an award because we tripled the um, black graduation rate, um, well, when you say it, we've tripled the black graduation rate, that sounds like, you know, it sounds like it's a lot, right? But the devil is always in the detail. And the detail is 
that you know we had a seven percent graduation rate tripled is uh, you know only gets you to twenty one percent, which is you know not even graduating a quarter of the black students that we let come in, you know that we even allow to come in to graduate. So is it better? Is twenty one better than seven? Of course it is, but is it anywhere we want to be? No. I mean, it's it's and, and the fact that we are winning awards, graduating twenty one percent of our black student population doesn't tell me how good we're doing. It tells me how horrible higher ed is doing as a whole. So I don't know it's, it, it, whether it's indicative of you know the great work that we're doing um, as opposed to a more serious issue, it, you know, with with higher ed as a whole. If we're winning awards, graduating twenty one percent black. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, and, and this isn't, you know, dogging anybody. This, this, these are, this is the facts. And so, you know, if we're saying, you know, well, we've win, we're winning national awards. Yeah, we are winning national awards, but give the detail and let's try to do better. I want to say, I will shout it from the rooftop when we triple the graduation rate, when it's, when we start at 25% and we're over at 75%, right? That's when I'll be shouting from the rooftops. I'll do whatever I got to do. But we got a lot of work ahead of us. A lot of work ahead of us. So, Governor O'Brien, I would totally agree with that. And I don't, I don't think you've heard anyone um, ever say that we're satisfied with 21%. In fact, I, I don't, I don't, I think we always say that we're not satisfied with 21%. Yeah, any, I think any, that any, I, yeah, any other? I agree. I th- I think that um but what we do say and what is uh, what is often put out there is, you know, well we're, we 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 want awards without the detail, right? You know what the detail is and I know what the detail is, but if you say, "Oh, well, we tripled the black graduation rate to folks on the street," their presumption is, "Oh, wow, that's really fantastic. It's got to be like 80%, 70, 80% or something." And that's not true. And so what I'm saying is it's not enough just to say, well, we were winning awards. You know, we tripled the black graduation rate without the added detail. That's all I'm saying. And Mr. President, I'd like to um, just, you know, thank all of uh, my colleagues here uh, in advance. Uh, this is um, one example of many where we're on the same page, uh, but this is one uh, major issue where uh, I'm going to assume that we're going to be um, all on one accord. So thank you for that. And uh, I hope people pay attention to that um, as news circulates about the action that's being made here today. I also appreciate the fact that we're all on one accord about the need to continue the uh, advancement of the black community. Um, I know um, that matters a great deal to all of us. And I, I also just want to highlight that while we can acknowledge that there's plenty of work that needs to be done, I um, also feel like it's important to acknowledge the progress that we've made uh, thus far. Uh, you know, I appreciate um, the accolades that we've received and um, the initiatives that have been made. I don't want it to be missed um, on our community that uh, this is a university that does have a, a black man as the president and black men as a provost, um, and a lot of representation from our community um, on the, the Board of Governors as well. And everyone on the board supports uh, continued progress in that regard. And I feel like that is a mark of progress for uh, this university and for where we are as a, as a community. So thank you again. Um, that stands for you know, the, the folks who are uh, you know, white, who are Latina, even our friend from the other side of the political aisle. Um, so thank you. Other uh, comments before we take the vote? Seeing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mr. President, if I may, I'd like to make a brief statement. This is Marilyn Kelly. Yeah. I think this uh, has been a... Can I, can I just... Can I just affirm? So I, I think that was a, a unanimous vote, um, Julie. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Uh, uh, Chair, Chair Kelly, I'm sorry. Go ahead. This has been a very difficult decision for the board to freeze tuition. 
I think one of the biggest difficulties has been that in freezing tuition, the board forces the university to confront a budget shortfall for the coming year of as much as $60 million. And it further hinders our efforts uh, to improve our, our statistics, our achievements with respect to the particularly the black and the underprivileged community, as Governor Barnhill pointed out. This, a tremendous amount of work has gone into making this hard decision. Uh, board members have met repeatedly on it, discussed it, weighed the pros and cons, asked many questions of the president, and then weighed the answers that staff and the president have provided. I believe that my colleagues here have acted responsibly in recommending the freeze and I commend them for it. And I also commend President Wilson and his staff, his senior administrators, for their many long hours of work in finding a clear path to lead the university through these very troubling times. Um, thank you. Um, I think there's no further business uh, for the uh, for the meeting, so I'm going to adjourn um, the meeting. Thank you all very much, and let me just add my uh, uh, thanks also to the board for uh, this unanimous uh, decision. I think certainly that it's going to be in the best interest of our students, and I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're adjourned.